Strange, but true stories. Tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. September 12th, 1952. Flatwoods, West Virginia. A tiny town of 300 people in central West Virginia, 70 miles northeast of Charleston. Ed and Freddie May were in their yard playing along with their friend, Tommy Heyer. Something in the dusky sky that night caught the boys' attention. When they looked up, they saw a red light streak across the sky, and it appeared to crash on a nearby farm. Frightened but curious about what they had just seen, the boys ran to tell Eddie and Freddie's mom what they had just witnessed. As a group, the four of them hurried to the spot where they could see what the object had been. Others had seen what they described as a fireball and converged on the area too. What they saw and smelled scared them and then sent them all running back to their houses with a bizarre tale. It was seven feet tall. No, it was bigger. It was nine feet tall. It was 13 feet tall if it was anything. It was 10 feet tall with red eyes and a green face. There was a pair of bright eyes staring at us from a tree. And that awful smell. What was that? It may have had claws for hands. One of the boys peed his pants. He was so scared. It was a little tough to see with a dense mist around. It hissed at us. The next day's local newspaper reported that seven Braxton County residents on Saturday reported seeing a 10-foot Frankenstein-like monster in the hills above Flatwoods. Lee Stewart, the local newspaper publisher, said, Those people were the most scared people I've ever seen. People don't make up that kind of story that quickly. After hearing the account from the kids and adults who claimed to have seen the creature, Stewart marched up that hill with a shotgun. The creature was gone. It didn't take long for the national news media to latch on to the story, bringing terror to a wide swath of people now across the country in newspapers and on the radio. Then, the U.S. Air Force came to inquire and conduct a UFO inquiry, part of Project Blue Book that dispatched a handful of investigators around the country to look into such claims. The story began to take on a life of its own, with more and more people claiming they had seen it. As the years passed, it became a local legend, a round-the-campfire spooky story that defined the town of less than 300 people for nearly seven decades now. It wasn't long before locals started to cash in on the curious out-of-towners that started arriving to catch a glimpse of the holler where the mysterious creature crash-landed and emerged from whatever vehicle it came in. There's a monster museum now that will be happy to sell you t-shirts or a 12-inch tall ceramic green monster toy statue. The monster became known by a few different names. The green monster seems to be the one most say, but others call it the Flatwoods Monster, the Braxton County Monster, or the Phantom of Flatwoods. But what was it that these locals had apparently seen? The next day's newspaper read, State police laughed off the reports as hysteria. They said the so-called monster had grown from 7 to 17 feet in just 24 hours. Gray Barker interviewed the witnesses and came up with the following description of what the kids and adults described for the most part. It was a creature with a round, blood-red face, a large, pointed, hood-like shape around its head, what one woman described as being like the ace of spades. Its eyes were a greenish-orange light with a dark black or dark green body. It was approximately 10 feet tall, mechanical looking, with small claw-like hands, clothing like folds. It made a hissing sound and appeared to glide toward the group. The witnesses spoke of a pungent mist that some claimed later to have made them nauseous. When the witnesses were requested to draw what they had seen, the pictures came out very much alike. The local sheriff and a deputy had been investigating reports of a crashed aircraft in the area. They did not report seeing, hearing, or smelling anything in the area. However, local newspaper publisher Mr. Stewart claimed to have discovered skid marks in the field with an odd gummy deposit 
with many claiming that as evidence of a saucer landing. Though there was never any report of the craft being seen at the landing or crash site, other investigators spoke of treetops being singed and other treetops and branches in the area being broken as if something had sheared them off the tops. Now, 1952 America was a bit on edge. Cold War tensions with the Soviets and the looming specter of an atomic bomb dropping out of the sky made a lot of people anxious. As the History Channel pointed out, spook stories sprout best when the seed lands in a bed fertile with anxiety. Life magazine published an article in the April 7, 1952 edition with the headline, Have We Visitors from Space? Of course, with Marilyn Monroe on the cover of that issue, it may not have been the first article that most read. The Air Force was scanning for bombers over our skies, the Air Force is now ready to concede that many saucer and fireball sightings still defy explanation, Life's summary headline said. Life offers some scientific evidence that there is a real case for interplanetary saucers. Now again, this Life magazine article came out in the April 1952 edition, and we're talking about September. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were awaiting execution for espionage and selling atomic weapons plans to the Soviets. Senator Joseph McCarthy stoked Americans' fears by saying the communists had infiltrated not only the U.S. Department of State, but almost every industry and corner of the nation. Such was the backdrop in the country, and of course in Flatwoods on that September evening in 1952, when the group climbed the hill to check out the strange light crashing into the field. So, why mention the political landscape? Because, to many, The accounts of the witnesses were passed off as delusions or illusions, overactive imaginations seeing something that simply wasn't there. It was a meteor that passed overhead that night. There had been reports all along the east coast of meteors that particular evening. Then, when they went to the hill overlooking the field, they merely saw a large owl sitting on a tree branch. At least that's what the Air Force investigators reported. But the May brothers know exactly what they saw, and they are not ashamed who knows it. In fact, for a 2018 documentary about the Flatwoods monster, Freddy said, as far as for myself, it doesn't matter to me whether people believe or don't believe. Freddy and Ed are in their 80s now, still living, and they still stand by their account of what happened that night. But they are no longer talking to any reporters. Their story still brings people to Flatwoods, West Virginia, and the locals are still happy to sell you any sort of knick-knack or t-shirt with the monster's image emblazoned upon it. This has been another strange but true story. So, was it a visitor from another planet? Or simply an owl perched on a tree limb? A credible alien sighting? Or a local folktale. Tell us what you think in the comments below. And if you have a mysterious, hard to explain, phenomenal story you'd like to share with us, we'd love to read it. Send your strange but true story in an email to strangebuttruestories2 at gmail.com. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and sign up for notifications so you know when the next video drops to the channel. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Steve White. Until next time.